thank you very much Ru, for uh, for this very nice introduction uh, i also like to uh, to uh, very warmly welcome all the participants that have joined from all over the world so uh, good morning uh, good day good evening for everyone according where uh, you are sitting so i will also start to introduce myself so i'm philippe barboza I am the, uh, the head of the GTSCC uh, Secretariat and WHO HQ uh, Headquarter Cholera team based in Geneva. And it's my privilege today to be able to present the update from the GTFCC uh, on the behalf of the Secretariat. Uh, next, please. So uh, just uh, uh, very quickly as a kind of introduction, just to make sure that everybody is on the same line, but uh, I'm sure you all know uh, by now the, the, the theory of change, which is uh, sitting behind the, uh, the, the elaboration of the roadmap, but it's based on the commitments of first the country to establish a national cholera control plan uh, relying on even evidence-based uh, uh, cholera control measures, but also the commitment from partners to be able to provide the technical expertise and support as required. And last but not the least, the, the, uh, the financial, the commitment from the donors to be uh, to support uh, the mechanism uh, in the country to be able to implement this, uh, these plans. So the the strategy is also relying on three uh, basic axes. The first one is uh, the uh, uh, early detection and response to uh, outbreak, uh, and especially to prevent them to uh, become a major issue. The second axis is uh, to implement multi-sectorial uh, intervention in cholera hotspot, and with this having an objective of being much more uh, mid and longer term and sustainable strategy. So uh, uh, to, uh, to efficiently control cholera over time and not just to be on the reactive side. Um, and the third point being the, uh, the coordination between uh, all the different uh, partners at both at national, but also at global level. So all these interventions are based uh, on five pillars in terms of, of, uh, of, the, of course, leadership and collaboration. This pillar being the water and sanitation and hygiene, the vaccination with all cholera vaccine, uh, the surveillance, which means the epidemiology, the laboratory part and the reporting, uh, the case management in, and the uh, system strengthening. And uh, last but not the least, definitely the community engagement uh, which is essential to any type of interventions. Next slide, please. So before we go in the, uh, in the uh, details of uh, the, the, the achievement of uh, the last years, uh, I just would like to take uh, a few minutes and to take some example of uh, uh, the process and the time it, uh, it uh, took for country to, uh, to develop uh, such kind of strategy. So we used uh, two of, uh, as an example, two of the country which have been very much engaged in uh, and very active in uh, establishing uh, uh, the plan and being a champion of GTSCC on some sort. So, uh, and as for, it's the case for many countries, very often uh, the trigger for country to, uh, to uh, feel the need to be engaged in uh, elaborating national cholera plan, it's the occurrence of an outbreak. So when we can see here uh, on these two examples on a very simplified uh, timeline that for both of these countries, between the time the outbreak was detected, that the reactive campaign was implemented, and the time that it took for uh, a complete, uh, almost complete national cholera control plan to be established, it took over a year. So, and this is again from uh, two countries that have been very active from the very beginning to get uh, 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 and very uh, uh, on, on the front line of elaborating the plan. So the message behind is clearly countries should not wait for the occurrence of an outbreak to start thinking about uh, elaborating an, uh, a cholera plan because this is taking time and this is something that needs to be uh, anticipated. Next slide, please. So uh, in terms of uh, uh, highlight of the past year, so uh, I'm sure many of you have uh, uh, had a chance to look at it, but the, uh, 
the annual cholera report of the cases uh, reported to WHO by country was published uh, in uh, recently on the weekly epidemiological record. And the Somehow the striking news of this uh, release was that the number of cases uh, in 2019 increased uh, significantly compared to the year before. But actually this is hiding a number of very positive signs, being the first one being that overall, uh, the case fatality rate of the cases that were reported uh, by country has dropped and quite significantly by 36%. It's also the lowest number of cases that was reported in the past 20 years or since the turns of the 21st century by in Africa. And it's also uh, the lowest number of both cases and deaths that were reported in the America since introduction of cholera in 18, 2010. So of course, uh, where is this increase coming from? Uh, so 93% of the cases that were reported in 2019 were reported by a single country, uh, Yemen. So, uh, which, which explain, as you can see on the, on the right part of the graph, that uh, uh, the, the, the difference between uh, uh, the previous years. Of course, we have to be very careful about the interpretation and the over-interpretation of this data. I think we all know the limit of the current surveillance uh, data reporting with the variability of the case definition, et cetera, et cetera. But still, this is giving an indication that uh, at least things are moving in the right direction. Uh, there will be some more, more uh, presentation on the uh, use of uh, oral cholera vaccine, but just as a recap for uh, 2019, uh, which was to a certain extent a kind of normal year. Uh, uh, so uh, over 23,000 million doses were uh, shipped, were provided to con in certain country, uh, a bit more than half, 14 and 5 million were used for reactive campaign and uh, a bit less than half was used for preventive campaign and you have the list of country and uh, on the map on the right. Next slide please. So now of course we are coming to 2020 which is clearly not a normal year and we have all been affected to, uh, to a certain way and uh, usually more than, than less by COVID and I think it was important to have a, a kind of quick overview of the, uh, the impact that COVID had on the implementation of the roadmap. So uh, one of the first uh, uh, element that we observed is uh, obviously in country uh, at all level, including national, international, uh, NGOs, et cetera, there was a massive uh, repurposing of staff uh, that were normally working on other activity to COVID. And so therefore that's uh, had an impact on cholera, but also on many other diseases. But uh, the containment measure uh, also had uh, impact and uh, notably, uh, for example, in preventing uh, external support, whether they were all uh, sometime at national level, but also uh, at uh, regional or international level. Uh, this resulted very clearly on uh, having a number of preventing campaign being either postponed or uh, uh, sometimes cancelled. Uh, this had also, although it's difficult to measure, but had an impact on access to healthcare and also because uh, uh, of the uh, some of the containment measures. Uh, it has also uh, it had also an impact on surveillance. Uh, again, we. For us, it's very difficult to measure in which way, but uh, there was less people working on surveillance. There was very certainly some delay in reporting uh, that may have impacted uh, um, activity. And uh, it globally, it affected all uh, the pillar, including WASH uh, and uh, community engagement. As a result, this also uh, had delayed the effort that country had started before, either in 2019 or early 2020, to elaborate their uh, national cholera plan, not by lack of interest, but just by uh, lack of, uh, of time and human resources. Uh, and as uh, for, for a more maybe trivial point, but uh, in the life of GTFCC, uh, all the meeting has been cancelled that has uh, kind of, you know, impacted the way we normally uh, interact with a different working group and with yourselves. Uh, all this being said, uh, there are some positive signs, uh, or at least some light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, the first of it being that uh, despite um, COVID uh, reactive campaign uh, were implemented, 
Some of them were delayed, but uh, not always due to COVID, but uh, for other reasons, as you can see on the right map, some of them were, uh, were delayed because of security reasons, for instance, but uh, globally speaking, reactive campaign were implemented, preventive campaign were either implemented as planned in a number of countries or for the one that, for some of the, them that were postponed, they were resumed. Uh, and since uh, I would say a few weeks, uh, an increasing number of countries is resuming their work on uh, identification of hotspot, elaboration of uh, national cholera plan, uh, etc. And so something which again uh, is uh, somehow difficult to measure, but which is becoming an, uh, an increasing question and a very important question to address is of likely uh, positive impact that COVID had on the transmission of cholera uh, through the uh, generalization of, you know, end washing, containment measure, limitation of movement, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, in a number of regions and countries, the number of cases which are reported are much lower than what is usually observed and that will need to be further investigated. Next slides, please. So, uh, as uh, uh, just to have a very quick, and again, this will be much more detailed on the on the presentation from the uh, OCV working group, but just wanted to take this opportunity also to see the uh, uh, what has been done in terms of OCV vaccination since the uh, since 2013. So you can see that uh, at least up to 2019, there was an, almost an exponential use of. Uh, vaccine from uh, uh, about 200,000 doses in 2013 to over 23 million in 2019. The sign was that was also very positive. It's uh, uh, the line in yellow, the dotted line in yellow, where you can see that for the first part uh, 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 of the year, the number of doses that were provided through ICG, so through for uh, outbreak response, has been regularly decreasing uh, to the benefit of the number of doses that were used to prevent the occurrence of outbreaks. So this was a very positive sign. 2019 was kind of an exception, but bear in mind that uh, in 2019, this is partly not only explained by uh, the very uh, major cyclone on the southern and eastern part of Africa, huh, notably in Mozambique and Zimbabwe, uh, which represents uh, more than 20% of the doses that were uh, uh, provided in terms of uh, outbreak response. And 2020, of course, the year is not yet finished. We are still expecting a number of, uh, uh, of uh, shipments to take place before the end of the year, but you can see that, uh, as illustrated, the number of doses that has been implemented this year was much lower for both uh, uh, outbreak and uh, for preventive campaign. Uh, but uh, also uh, there is, you know, uh, almost uh, more uh, doses that have been approved for preventive and reactive campaign. Again, we will need to interpret with more uh, distance uh, the reduction of uh, outbreak and the possible impact on, on COVID. Next slide, please. So uh, as uh, Fru uh, highlighted before, I mean, there are a number of products that was uh, uh, released uh, since uh, last year. The first one being the cholera outbreak manual. So this one is available uh, online. Uh, another tool that I would very strongly advise or advocate for you to first download and but also to share it with your partners. It's uh, the cholera app. So it's, uh, it's a tool that has, which is very simple, which is uh, really dedicated for people to be able to use on the field. Uh, it's only you only require internet only for the download, but then after uh, when the tool has been downloaded on the smartphone, you don't need to uh, to have access to internet, and that provides very uh, practical and simple information. You have a few capture of screen on the on the right. But, uh, and the feedback that we have for a number of people who have done it, find it extremely useful. So again, this is a tool which is based, for, for, uh, based or targeted for people working on the field. And I think it's also a good opportunity for me to ask you to uh, disseminate, disseminate the information and to make this uh, tool more known and more uh, accessible for people who might uh, require it. Uh, so something that we have been working on as well is a translation of uh, the different uh, GTHCC supports, starting by the uh, website. 
um, the app is also being translated uh, in French. Uh, the technical guidance are all also uh, on the process of being translated. Uh, and the website is already available on, on French. Okay, some people could say, why French? It's not because I'm French, it's because 30% of the countries that uh, are part of the GTFCC uh, priority country are uh, French speaking country, okay, versus only 40% of the country uh, for which uh, English is either the official or recognized language. The other country, the other language, uh, represent individually less than 6%, so less than three countries uh, use the same other language. So this is why we have decided to, to prioritize the French, to increase the accessibility to all the resources for people uh, who are not uh, you know, necessarily familiar with this English. And uh, last, so there is a, a, an interim guiding document which is uh, uh, being elaborated to support country to develop uh, their NCP. Next slide, please. Uh, so, uh, in terms of, uh, uh, again, what has been done since, uh, since uh, a few years, so uh, as you, most of you might remember from last year, so uh, there was a release of uh, a tool uh, uh, designed by uh, GTFCC to uh, support the identification of uh, cholera hotspots. So this tool has been used uh, already by uh, four countries, Ethiopia, Yemen, Zimbabwe, and uh, Zambia, and Zanzibar. Uh, and it's on progress for uh, the Sudan and Zambia. Okay, I mean, this being said, I mean, we know that a number of countries had used other methods before uh, the release of the tool. And uh, uh, so they are not all listed there, but uh, in the future, uh, more and more, uh, we would recommend to use a similar tool uh, to uh, as a basis for uh, identification of a spot. Uh, regarding the elaboration of national cholera control plan, uh, again, post roadmap, because we know that many countries had some plan uh, before the, uh, uh, the implementation of the roadmap. So two have been officially launched. So uh, Zambia and Zanzibar, two have been finalized, uh, the, uh, the one from Bangladesh and Somalia. And another four are on progress, so Zimbabwe, Ethiopia, Kenya, and uh, for the mainland of Tanzania. Next one, please. So uh, as uh, you know, mentioned by Fru as well, so uh, uh, last year was also the occasion to uh, endorse a new uh, operational model, uh, and that was presented. So it's just a quick feedback on what has been uh, done since last year. So as Fru mentioned, the, the, the uh, a steering committee meeting have been uh, held regularly, sometimes postponed or delayed because of COVID, but they took place uh, uh, as uh, as planned. The IRP uh, independent review panel was established, but has also done its first review of uh, NCP that was uh, uh, released in, two, uh, in 2020, and that was the NCP from uh, from Zimbabwe. Uh, the country support platform is being launched, and again, there will be much more presentation later, so I will not go into detail at this stage. And something also which is important is, since the beginning of the year, we have started the process of renewing the uh, GTSCC membership. And to date, already more than 47 organizations have uh, registered. Okay, so the process is still ongoing, and we know that there are more organizations, but some people are bit slow in providing their request, so it's also a good time to remind for the people who have not done yet uh, this registration to do it uh, as soon as uh, convenient for them. Next slide. So um, again, uh, the, the, in terms of the life of the GTFCC, COVID has prevented to have any face-to-face -face meetings, so uh, we had to adjust to that and uh, uh, therefore, we have been organizing a virtual meeting instead of the face-to-face -face meeting uh, to replace uh, the, the, the planned working group meeting, uh, but also to complement them. So today, there have been already uh, uh, three meetings organized on WASH, three on epidemiology, two on case management, one on uh, surveillance, one on OCV, and there are uh, additional meetings that are planned for the last, uh, last part of the year for uh, OCV and laboratory. 
Uh, the development of technical guidance has continued, uh, and I will not uh, go into the detail because this will be covered by the different presentation that will come later on in the afternoon. And I would also say that uh, next year, I mean, we all know that COVID is not going to vanish by the click of the finger, so it's very likely that it will still be there on the beginning of next year. So. Uh, uh, we are still planning to continue to, uh, to keep the momentum with uh, engaging uh, and organizing virtual meeting. Uh, this being said, I think it's very clear that for us uh, also being able to reorganize as soon as COVID will allow face-to-face uh, uh, -face meeting is something which is important. I think the human factor is something which is essential in such kind of uh, task force and initiative. And uh, we'll do that as soon as it's possible, but I'm sure you all understand that it is totally beyond our control. Next slide, please. So a very quick catch up on the uh, advocacy, communication and reporting. So uh, uh, as we had initially planned to organize a meeting around the, uh, uh, the uh, World Health Assembly. Uh, so we transformed that uh, virtual meeting uh, this face-to-face -face meeting in virtual meeting with a very good attendance uh, and there were more than uh, 17, there were 17 speakers, uh, about uh, 240 participants from 22 countries, which uh, for, for first uh, event of this kind was uh, kind of uh, very encouraging for us. Uh, the report progress have been submitted to the uh, WHO executing board and something which for us was extremely important, but I would say even more for the country that uh, some of them use it, was a statement that was uh, released by the GTFCC uh, steering committee regarding the promotion of the use of a CV despite COVID. Uh, and that was also, I think, uh, this is at least the feedback that we had, uh, a positive element from some of the country to, uh, uh, as an element that was used also to, uh, uh, to facilitate the implementation of this campaign. So um, in terms, so that was also something that we discussed last year. So uh, regarding the research agenda, so this is done in collaboration with the Wellcome Trust and uh, uh, MMN, MMGH. So uh, this will be presented later on. So I will not go into the details. Next slide. So uh, now, uh, what are we planning for the next step? So the, thing, the first things I'd like to say, it's, you know, uh, since the revitalization of the uh, GTHCCs, there have been significant progress that have been made. And this progress uh, are, uh, is setting up a very strong foundation, a very strong base for us to be able to move forward. So, but now what we need uh, collectively to look at, it's how can we further operationalize, um, put in practice uh, the implementation of the strategy. So that means uh, how can we practically uh, facilitate the much more targeted and tailored implementation of multi-sectorial intervention into hotspot, uh, how uh, long-term wash intervention can be implemented uh, uh, and more rapidly uh, in the hotspot, how can we support a country to uh, elaborate uh, their uh, national cholera plan uh, in, if possible in a much more rapid way, but also uh, what kind of strategy we need to develop to engage uh, the cholera affected countries that are not yet engaged in uh, the implementation of the roadmap. So uh, for that matter, the, uh, the country support platform, which is currently being established, will be a, a key element that uh, uh, we all believe and hope that this will be uh, the next uh, game changer into providing much more tailored and adapted uh, uh, support to country. Uh, so the time is ripe for uh, the way forward. Next slide. So um, among the, the, uh, the, the things that really uh, need to be, uh, uh, we need to put more focus on is really the, to support, uh, to further support, because it has already been done. Huh? So we are not reinventing the wheel, but to further support the hotspot analysis, but also the targeted multi-sectorial intervention. Uh, that mean, uh, but not only, but of course, that means to use, uh, to, to prioritize and to have a much more appropriate and strategic use of uh, the OCV, as we all know that the stock of vaccine are not uh, expandable and uh, the, 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 the stockpile will always be a limit. 
uh, but also to reinforce the surveillance capacity. I mentioned at the very beginning of my presentation all the limitation we have with the uh, uh, current reporting system, which is mainly based on a clinical description, so which is not really adapted to be able to monitor, uh, to, to evaluate burden, and uh, even less to uh, uh, to uh, to pilot uh, and direct the strategy. So uh, we need collectively to think about, you know, how to uh, update the minimum stand standard for surveillance to improve laboratory and confirmation of cases. Uh, but all that taking into account that that must be done in a way that allow to tailor the strategy to the specific context and settings. Uh, so, again, that will be very important as well to be able to support uh, the targeting of hotspot for the implementation of sustainable wash intervention and not just the emergency uh, in intervention. So, this is just two examples huh, how to, to collect wash, uh, wash and indicator data in hotspot, but also how can we more efficiently uh, bridge uh, and link uh, the OCV and wash intervention. So, uh, this will also uh, mean that uh, although we will need to continue to work with specific pillar, it's also extremely important to have a, a global overview and to see how we can uh, integrate much more the, the work of the different uh, pillars, the different working group to have a much more comprehensive uh, approach. Uh, and uh, again, last, last but not the least, how to implement and to support the implementation of priority uh, operational research that will provide answers uh, to uh, the uh, practical implementation of the roadmap. Next slide. So, uh, so this is uh, the, the, the last one. So I also, of course, want to use this opportunity to thank all the partners and donors that have been uh, supporting GTFCC and that have made all that uh, uh, possible. So, it's not an exhaustive list, but uh, of course, uh, Bill and Mendigia Gate Foundation for the support they are providing to the Secretariat, GTFCC Secretariat, but also to the Country Support Platform, Gavi for the support to OCV, Technical Assistance and Surveillance, the CDC for the support they provide, uh, the multi-sectorial support they are providing to the country and the regions, Epicentre, Institute Pasteur, ICDDRB, UNICEF, Water Aid, and CDC for chairing the different working group. The Fondation Merdieu, where we are here today for uh, not only uh, uh, hosting us in a very nice place, and we all miss you with a beautiful view on the lake uh, here in uh, close to NC, but also for, um, uh, for the website development uh, and, uh, and other support. Uh, IFRC, which, has, uh, which was already very much engaged in the one wash approach, um, targeting the, the, uh, the priority hotspots, uh, no, prioritizing their wash strategy in the hotspot area. And now for uh, hosting the country support platform, GHU for developing support for cholera database, MSF, uh, SCF, MEDER, and IOM for support to campaign, Welcome Trust and MMGH for the research agenda, and all the partners, all the individuals that have contributed for the uh, uh, different section, either the, uh, the IRP, the approval of uh, GTFCC requests and technical guidance. So thank you very much for all. And that will be my last slide. Next, over to you. Okay, uh, no, thank you for that uh, outline of the achievements of the uh, GTFCC, uh, which includes the development of NCPs in countries, the decrease in morbidity and mortality, uh, how COVID affected our plans and how it will affect, affect us in future, the development of the tools, uh, uh, including the manual, the app, the French guidelines, um, your activities that we are embarking on, you emphasize the fact that people need to look at the renewal of their membership, that in future we will have a lot more virtual meetings because of, of COVID. And you also highlighted some of our plans and way forward. 